at One Up Gaming, episode 344 of the One Up Gaming podcast. Uh, I'm going to quick go through this week's news. So, another t shirt, another top. This one's the Rainbow Effect logo. So, just to say how inclusive we are. And that sounds so patronising, but eh, what we're going to do. Anyway, so we'll go through this week's news. Uh, just going to be a really quick one this week. I say that, don't I? But. Um, we never know what's going to happen. Um, I should really set all these things up before we start. But anyway, we will start now. So, this week's news. Uh, Apple announces the date for the WWDC 2023. So, WWDC 23 is going to be our biggest and most exciting yet. They say that every year, don't they? Because they need people to watch. They've officially announced its annual Worldwide Developers Conference. So it's going to be basically this year, the 5th of June, uh, until the 9th of June. Like last year's, it'll be online only. In-person event will be... Oh, yeah. With an in-person event offered. Well, the first year of the conference, I guess that'll be like the the in, you know, the, the sort of show. Uh, they're not going to say what the show, they're not going to show what they're doing until the show itself. They're trying to just market it. So, what do you guys think? Do you think they're going to do the new iPhone? Do you think they're going to show the new software, new... Just new things, isn't it? Just new things. Everyone likes new things. Nice, shiny new things. Um, so, we'll go into the next bit of news, and that is... Disney lays off Marvel Entertainment Chairman Ike Perlmutter uh, amid the major shake-up. Um... Isaac uh, was the chairman and CEO of Marvel Entertainment, a separate entity from Marvel Studios, has been let go at Disney according to the New York Times. Marvel Entertainment, which is mainly focused on consumer products, will reportedly be folded into other parts of the company. Uh, the move comes just two days after Disney CEO Bob Iger announced 7,000 layoffs as part of a strategic realignment of the company. He said an email to employees. Uh, uh, Pearl Mutter's run at Marvel Entertainment was an often a controversial one, as executive, as the executive recently tried to and failed to shake up Disney board. It took over Marvel Entertainment in the late nineties. He was largely behind the four billion sale to Disney. Uh, I'm not bothered. I'm really not bothered. What do you guys think? Do you think this is a big thing? I think it's just. Um, Disney just moving on some of the people who were at Marvel when they bought Disney. Bought Disney when they bought Marvel and just moving these old people out to get their new people in. Um, I think that's more more than likely what it is. But... Uh, yeah, so I think that's what it is. So we'll move on to the next bit of news. And that is... Final Fantasy VII NFT trading cards on the way from Square Enix. Does, does anyone think this is still a good idea? So Square Enix has announced a set of collectible trading cards to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII, which will also be available digitally as NFTs. The Final Fantasy VII Anniversary Art Museum Digital Card Plus Collection. Whew, that's a big mouthful will be available from March 31st and will feature art, visuals and famous scenes from the 25 year history of the game as reported by VGC. Each $3.30 pack contains 6 physical cards and 1 digital exchange card displaying an alphanumeric code. Uh, I'm not even going to bother reading any of this because I don't know what any of this means. So. Is any of you going to buy these cards? Are any of you going to do these crypto rubbish things? Because um, I don't know. It's just weird. It really is weird. With a couple capital W. Um, so we will go to the next bit of news. PlayStation Plus games announced for 2023. Um, so it looks as though... Uh, uh, meet your maker for PS4, PS5. Sackboy, A Big Adventure for PS4, PS5, and Tales of Iron for PS4, PS5. Now, I don't know the first one. Sackboy, I've heard it was okay, and I don't know what Tales of Iron is. 
I'll leave it at that. Uh, I could read into it and find out more about it, but I don't care. I really don't care. Um, so we'll go straight into the next bit of news because it's free games, but not free because you're paying for the service. Anyway, Jeremy uh, Renner opens up about snowplow accident in the first interview. What's my body going to look like? Marvel's Jeremy Renner. Oh, he's not Marvel. This is not owned by Marvel. He's like Hawkeye. So it's Marvel's Hawkeye. Anyway, uh, has revealed uh, all about his recent snowplow accident in a new interview. Speaking to Diane Sawyer, I don't know who that is, for a new TV special titled A Story of Terror, Survival and Triumph, the Avengers star revealed exactly how much he remembers of the harrowing incident. <coughs> all of it. I was awake through every moment. He was hospitalised back in January after he was run over by his own snowcat snowplow. A machine weighing over 14,330 pounds. I'm English, I don't know what that means. Uh, he was attempting to his new he was attempting to help his nephew out of the snow near his home when he was crushed. I see him in a pool of blood coming from his head, said Renner. Uh, nephew during, said Renner's nephew during the interview. I ran up to him, I didn't think he was alive. Renner suffered blunt cut chest blunt chest trauma and orthopaedic injuries and, also, and underwent successful surgery shortly after the incident. He also shared a, a photo of himself shortly after the incident. He also shared a photo of himself after surgery. Um, thanking everyone for the support. I chose to survive. Ah, ah. Why am I reading these things? These things, it's not news, it's not stories, it's just weird. Um, I guess it's just some of these websites like to really put these things on as main things and it's just simple easy to do work anyway Resident Evil 4 Remake sells 3 million units in two days Capcom have, rev have revealed that Resident Evil 4 Remake is off to a strong start after selling more than 3 million copies in its first two days on sale this appears to give Resident Evil 4 the best launch of all the remake titles as Resident Evil 2 had only shipped 3 million units in its first week and Resident Evil 3 was only confirmed to hit 3.9 million after a year and a half on the market. The 3 million number references worldwide sales of the highly anticipated remake also across all consoles, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Series and the PC. Um, the game has been hyped up for a while not just because of the remake of what's considered one of the greatest games of all time the publisher released a special demo ahead of this card. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so Resident Evil 4 sells well. That is the main one of that. Uh, this next sort sort of newsy story thing isn't massively news, but I think it's worth talking about. So next up, Xbox Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 gets a red and blue hues. So these are like 140 quid, uh, 140 dollars. Um, as you can see in the picture on here. They are just the Xbox Series controllers, but one's blue and one's red with the rubber black grips. Um, yeah, it's just the Series Elite controllers. Good little controllers, we'll move on, no one needs to know more. Um, this one, it's like I used to love the Series when it first came out, but then I kind of lost interest quickly. Kirby Enthusiasm writer says, 12th season will be its last in since will be its last in since deleted tweet will be its last I don't know Curb Your Enthusiasm producer John Herman tweeted and then deleted the news that season 12 will apparently be the hit comedy show's final season maybe you'll love the show he said in the now deleted tweet alongside a photo of himself with Larry David maybe you hate the show maybe you don't give a shit in any event shooting the last scene of the last episode of the final season and the Hollywood Reporter also confirmed that the upcoming season will see the show bow out with a source stating that the final episode felt like a homecoming. Um, now I tried watching Kirby Enthusiasm because it's from one of the main writers that is um, that created uh, Seinfeld and me being English Seinfeld was one of the big shows I watched on BBC2 at like midnight because it wasn't like a main sort of show
but we'll see what sort of happens with that. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's that. Um, season twelve, good going on them. Just realised that the recording of the voiceover stuff might not have worked. So for the first half of this show, it's going to be really bad sound audio quality, and I do apologise. Hopefully, it's not completely botched like it was last week, where I had to re-record stuff and redo stuff. Um, but we'll move on to the next bit of news, and that is uh, Bloober Team clarifies release status about Silent Hill 2. Uh, the come out and clarified rumours surrounding the Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil, Silent Hill 2 remake status, as well as some inaccurate translations and out of context statements. This comes after Blooper, I keep saying Blooper, but it's Blooper, team president Peter Babino gave an interview with the Polish side last week reportedly saying that the game was technically ready. As Blueby team, we don't comment on rumours, however, this time we need to take the floor as some recent statements have been taken out of context due to inaccurate translations. The developer said in a statement on Twitter, our company's message did not contain sales forecasts or specific titles. The figures connected to Silent Hill 2 refer to the potential success of the type of game we will be focusing on in the future. Uh, it is also not true that we have announced that Silent Hill 2 is ready for release regardless of the development stage. All of our activities are focused on obtaining the highest quality of the finished product, the quality that fans of Silent Hill 2 deserve. We are aware that players are waiting for more information about Silent Hill 2. As soon as such information becomes available, we are sure that Konami, the publisher for the game, will share it with fans. Uh, yeah, yeah, Blue team not happy with their president, it looks like. Um, so, going into the next bit of things. So, the next bit of news, it looks as though... <clears throat> Rumours swirl around E3's future as Sega and even more publishers back out. Um, concern over E3 2023's future is going to continue to grow, prompting more publishers to drop out behind Nintendo, Xbox, Sony and Ubisoft. But I thought Sony didn't attend them for years. IGN has learned that Sega and Tencent will be skipping E3 2023 amid rumours that the promised triumphant return of, the, of gaming's biggest event may not happen at, after all. Uh, spoken to several in uh, numerous individuals in publishing and PR who typically have knowledge event strategies of whom express concern that the status of this summer's event many told us that they have heard any anyone else who was planning to attend blah 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 now oh, well, what do you guys think think that the um, E3 is over with or do you reckon E3s could continue and then the final bit of news that I have on here, uh, let's load this up, is um, US Congress members accuse Sony of anti-competitive tactics against Xbox in Japan. Um, 11 members of US Congress have signed letters raising concerns of anti-competitive tactics reportedly being used by Sony to gain an advantage in the Japanese video game market over its primary competitor Microsoft. Is it? I thought Nintendo would have something to say about that. The two letters which were signed by members representing both major US political parties and obtained, and obtained by Axios, no idea, were addressed by Ambassador Vieira yeah, okay. uh, We'd like to bring the attention of the imbalanced Japanese video game market, which we are concerned may be a result of discriminatory trade practice that could violate the spirit of the US-Japan trade. Oh, Sony, you should have just allowed the merger to happen. But now, this merger is spitting in your face. Absolutely spitting in your face. It's quite funny to see, but we'll see what happens. So, we'll go through this week's gaming top 40. Number 40, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, NBA 2K23, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Luigi's Mansion 3, Dead Space, Lego Harry Potter Collection at 35, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, oh god, Atelier, Riser 3, Alchemist and the End of the Secret Key, I've never heard of that in my life. 
Um, Red Dead Redemption 2, number 30, Grand Theft Auto, the Trilogy, the Definitive Edition, Just Dance 2023 Edition, Metroid Dread, Mario Plus Rabbids, Sparks of Hope, Pokemon Legends, Arcus, number 25, The Last of Us Remastered, The Last of Us Part 1, I'm confused now, um, Splatoon 3, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Mario 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury, number 20, Mario Party Superstars, Number 19, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, Pokemon Scarlet, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Sonic Frontiers, Number 15, Pokemon Violet, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, Metroid Prime Remastered, Nintendo Switch Sports, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and the top 10, Minecraft at 10, Grand Theft Auto 5 at 9, God of War Ragnarok at 8, Super Mario Odyssey at 7, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at 6, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at 5, WWE 2K23 at 4, so FIFA 23 at um, 3, Hogwarts Legacy at 2, Resident Evil 4 at 1, and that is thanks to the Games Press and the GFK Entertainment Software Charts, all formats, so thank you for that. And we will end. So thank you all for watching, it's been me David from One Up Gaming, saying thank you all. Um, episode 344, please go to our website, oneupgaming.co.uk, get back into the centre. Um, got new reviews on there, new t-shirts, new stuff, go to the YouTube channel, click on store, and you can buy these t-shirts, these hats, all the things I've been wearing today, some really smart gear. Well, I say that, I'd have to say that because I've designed it and I made it. Um, so go to our Patreon site, patreon.com slash O-U-G. Um, you can buy the album Games Inspired Music available now. Buy it, stream it. Um, Twenty percent of each sale goes to the Child's Play charity. The audiobook on tapes dot com. Our first one hundred podcasts is available to buy, and you can watch watch that. You can buy that, and one pound of each sale will go to the Diabetes UK. Uh, we're on Facebook, so just go to facebook dot com slash one up gaming, and subscribe to us, follow us, whatever it is on YouTube. I don't know. No, Facebook. I don't know what you do on Facebook. YouTube, it's just um, search for the logo. It's not this one. It's, it's, it's that one. There we go. It's that logo. Um, we've got over 2,000 subscribers. Please follow us, share us, like us, bell us, all that kind of thing. It's amazing. People are great. I, I love the feedback. I love the comments. I love anything like that. If you want to tweet us, it's at OUG Official. And if you want to send us any emails, it's contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. And that, my friends, is episode 344 of the What Up Gaming Podcast. It's David, thank you, goodbye, and we'll be back next week. Peace.